for many people watching this, you may not know what the Fair Points podcast is. It's three of us, myself, Sonny Webster, and the Fezzanator. And we talk about things that we could consider to be fair points. Fair point. Mate, we're actually missing one member. Fuck Cam King. <laughs> Fuck Cam King. <laughs> He's going to be listening to this going, oh, I wish I was with the boys. Uh, for any of you that remember, we have got the, the ginger ninja, our friend Cameron ginger King. Ninja. <laughs> but to be honest, we said to him, if you come back to Australia, you'll be involved. And he wants to be a little builder in the UK. Well, he's actually sat us off and done his own pod as well, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. Don't even mention the name. Nah. So it's been quite a while. We haven't actually caught up in months, have we? No, it's, this is, I think it's been six months since we've done a podcast. Other than the one we did at IFS. That didn't really count. No, nah, Ferris wasn't there. Or half a podcast. Yeah, I haven't seen you boys in, well, I saw you, we caught up, went to Five Guys. Fat burger. Mm. But Smith, you've been away for how long? Three months. Oh, I mean, it, it, some could call it a holiday. I mean, all I did was go on some of the UK's biggest podcasts, become a three-time <laughs> number one best-selling <laughs> you know, author. In my head, I was waiting how long he was going to do this. Sold out the Hammersmith Apollo, got my Australian <laughs> Tell us PR. what you did. Tell us what you did. Uh, you know, so just, you know, went back to release a little book, only got the highest accolade I could for it. Did a sold out book tour across the UK. Well, I, no, but less about me. What are you boys going up to? <laughs> <laughs> what a break. <laughs> what did you say to that? It's been ripping the head off can it. I, every... Can I try a bit of that chocolate? Please? Yeah, sure. So in the UK, wow, they don't have that caramel in the UK, do they? No, but they reckon that Cadbury's is better in the UK than they do here. Eh? It's Why? different. Why? It's, it's a different of that flavor. Ingredient that what? doesn't make it melt. You remember? An ingredient that doesn't make it melt. Yeah. So in Oz, anyone that moves over will notice the difference, and it's basically because it's so hot out here, so it's to stop the chocolate from melting. But it's a theory that I've never actually validated. Do you think that's actually so true? It could be bollocks, but I think it's true. Like genuine, if you go to like the Irish store up the road and you buy a Cadbury's chocolate, it tastes way sweeter. But out here, that's what the myth is, anyway. Yeah, I Mate, was going to say you give them a little, give them a little go, son. I think that's probably true because I've seen that right next to my gym there is a corner shop, and the guy's just got the chocolate out there in the window. I think how is it not melting? Mm. We got a bit distracted from my free time. Something. <laughs> I'm on a diet. Sorry. Are you actually? Yeah. I tried, but I was like, it's a podcast. You actually dieting? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm dieting. We'll just have a little bit. Of it. Why are you trying to alienate no, me and make me feel this is bad? Cheat day. Nah, I'm all right. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm tracking my calories. Th- th- Thirty days in a row, I've done that now. How much you lost? Four and a half kilo. Jamesacademy.com. <laughs> <laughs> actually, used my fitness part. Actually, should we talk about the pressing issue? Amazon. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> the other day. Bezos, right? you're finished, bro. <laughs> you know when you wake up and you're like, I just want to buy something. I just want to buy something today. I just want to buy something. So I was like, I might get the new iPhone. But news in Twitter a bit more recently. Put a little poll out there. 90% of people said it wasn't 50K worth it. 50K followers or so. On, on I, don't, I don't think it is worth it. It looks and feels the exact same. But we say this every year when Apple bring out a new iPhone. It's the same. But this one really just doesn't. And who uses their phone more than me? No. I'm on it all day. It's like, a, it's like an office for me, that. Yeah. So then I was thinking I might get it. Then I went to JB Hi-Fi just to have a look. They're like, sorry, it's sold out. And when something's sold out, you just want it more. But then I decided I don't really need the new phone. Why I wouldn't mean, you buy it from Apple? Sold out. JB Hi-Fi is the only place that's got it in stock. I heard that they've stopped making it already because no one's buying it. Then why would it be sold what, out? What, the new iPhone? Well, they've just, yeah, they've just what, was that the ran same corner shop? <laughs> 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 so like, then I was like, okay, I need to buy something. So I text Willits. You're right there, Ferris. That microphone. Sorry, sorry. I'm just struggling. <laughs> just trying to sort it out. Oh, mate, do you know what's happened? Yeah. That's Cam's fucking shitty build quality. <laughs> Cam King's making tables for a <laughs> living, right? If anyone's it's... bought Frank's design and wants a refund, swipe. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you got to untwist that. Oh, it's actually... Yeah, it's coming off. <laughs> you laughing at me. Help me out then, for fuck's sake. Like, not to <laughs> slander Cam's business, but fucking hell. You know, Liz Trust would last longer than this table. <laughs> Oh, sorry guys we've got a little technical malfunction here yeah time the table could fucking give way fucking hell Ferris fuck me there we go oh, so I was having a fucking panic attack then so anyway where were we JBI5 the Apple phone and then just round me I thought I text Willits I said Willits that fucking dry salon, isn't it? I'll turn it off in a second. <laughs> no, it takes, it takes like five minutes to turn off. <laughs> we haven't really? I've, I've got the here. issue downstairs. We'll talk about this later on. But my fucking, every time I put the light on in the bathroom, that extractor fan goes, <laughs> and every time you need a piss, you've got to wait 10 minutes for it to turn off. 
But we'll talk about that later on. Is it really, really? I thought I just went and turned it off. But so <laughs> basically, I was like, I need to buy something. Text me, let's go. We need a PS5, don't we? Because we've got an 85 inch TV here. I've got a Sonos soundbar. Then I went away for a few months, so I couldn't use it. And I only bought those because it was one day I needed to buy something. Oh, it sounds like Sonny's probably turned, turned off. off. So yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm going to get a PS5. Um, from a productivity standpoint, I was like, downtime, creativity, maybe just half an hour a day to play a bit of PlayStation. Could it be worse? So I bought a PS5, but they're all sold out. So I had to buy one at an extreme markup. How much yeah. of a markup are you talking? Nothing massive, just one and a half. <laughs> one and a half grand markup? Yeah, like no, no, no. Anyway. One and a half percent. Oh, okay. So, well, that's just not even maybe a few hundred dollars above, but then it was getting uh, delivered in two days. So I was like, okay, cool. So I'm driving home today because I know the delivery's coming. It says it's going to come before 8 p.m. So I was like, okay, it's going to come before 8 p.m. I'll leave about midday. In what world does it come at half 12 when it can deliver up to 8 p.m. on a Sunday? So the guy texts me, right? And if you're out there listening to this, you fucking ruined my day, you piece of shit. He was well angry. He was like, he's telling me to- How can I access your building? I said, hey, mate. I said, I'm currently just out. There's a delivery room inside on the right. Anyway, you can leave it without me. He goes, I think you need a receipt or to sign it. Um, I said, okay, but if you could just leave it inside the door, someone should walk past, enter the building, whatever. He goes, okay, I leave it inside on the chair, right-hand side from the door. And we all know there's a, that there. I get home 45, maybe 50 minutes later. Is it there? Is it fuck? Gone. He's nicked it. The delivery driver has stolen my PS5. From Amazon. Now, Amazon are just the, the body, all right? They're the body that incorporate everything. It's one of their drivers. One of their drivers is out there delivering packages. He's seen the box. And he's probably a vegan keto zealot. He's seen James Smith. And he's gone. He works at Herbalife. Yeah, that, mine, and he's, he's at it. So I'm obviously, understandably, fucking fuming. What are you gonna, what, what were you going to play on it? Just out of Modern Warfare 2, next stupid question. What's that? So I'm there, <laughs> fuming, and I call him up, they're like... You know, he's not just saying, he's genuinely fuming. <laughs> he hasn't got a PlayStation, but carry on. What, PlayStation 4? Yeah. What, so I'm going to buy a game for PS4 while PS5 is going to come. I was, mate, you know that unboxing experience where you open the box and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I was going to be doing that tonight, okay? <laughs> I thought I have a podcast with the boys. I'm going to be sat here staring at turned off TV later, all right? So then the, I call them up. I'm like, your fucking driver's had my PS5. Mm. And they're like, oh, can you confirm your billing address? I'm like, billing address, delivery address. They're like, nah, billing address. And I'm like, what the fuck is a billing address? Like, I can tell you where I fucking have stuff sent. They're like, no, it's not that. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I was like, for fuck's sake. So I'm going through my Amazon trying to try and find out my billing address, which is James Shaw's because I moved so much. <laughs> Eventually, they're like, sometimes it's an error and the driver marks it as delivered when he hasn't delivered it. I was like, the you cunt has texted me. <laughs> He's texted me naming exactly where the chair is in the reception of the foyer of the atrium of the building. He's told me where he's put it. He's looked at that spot dead in the eyes, text me a fucking lie, and then done a runner with the PS5. Were I you, was only an hour behind him. But he might have taken it to give it to his kids. Fuck his kids. <laughs> if you care that much about your kids, don't rob people. <laughs> well, so where have you left it then? Like, not where have you left it, like where are you at in the process? Like, what you <laughs> so I, I had to rant to some fucking person. I didn't rant, I was, I'm always incredibly polite on the phone. I was like, excuse me, I've been robbed. Can you sort this out? And I said to him, I don't want a refund. I just want it. I said, message your driver, tell him their CCTV and get him to just bring it. All right, just tell him to bring it back. I'm not gonna follow up. I'll say, look, I know what you've done. <laughs> I get tempted sometimes, right? I know what you've done. Just bring it back. Leave it there. We'll, we have it as an error, okay? Because <laughs> what's gonna happen is I'm gonna see you on your CCTV. I'm even gonna watch you when you make that moment between do I nick it or not? And I'm gonna look you in the eyes on CCTV and see you've had it, mm. right? What if it's one of your neighbors? <laughs> what well, <it> was me? <laughs> <laughs> I did think that. And I thought, wonder if Ferris has actually nicked it. So yeah, it, it could have by all means been a neighbor, but then surely what they can do is hold on to it. Have I got any messages? I could have a look now, but. Ferris could have gone downstairs and got it and taken it up to his. And that's why he was late. It is annoying though, when they say they I done called Ferris, he was at the airport. Yeah, he was like, are you home? No. <laughs> I was like, 
What's the What's the point living in the same building? You can't even do something. What's our bets? It's fraud or not? Nah, because then the guys at it. The maybe someone else has nicked it downstairs, but the chances are. You're not going to rob from your own building because you know there's CCTV yeah. there and you know there's a sharp-eyed mofo called Tom that operates this How building. How dangerous that where we live, mm. you know that little area that we took you to? Yeah. There's people always getting deliveries there. So there's like temple webs, there's nice furniture and you always go in there. Like, oh, it's quite tempting just to, you know. Just to nick something. <laughs> Is that, oh yeah, you're moving now. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2022, mate. It's uh, Tough times. I've yeah. got someone in my building, to be fair, and they literally order like five packages a day. Mm. Again, wh- where is she even putting all this stuff? Smith, you order all the time. Yeah, but right. it's called loss aversion, right? Where the psychological pain of losing something feels worse than the equivalent gain. Is so that what you're going through now? If you walk down the street and you found $20, you'd be like, oh, cool. But if you lost $20, you'd be fuming. Mm. You'd be more fuming than you would be buzzing. So, there's a, there's, so basically, okay, yeah, okay. that guy is about a plus three in happiness that he's robbed of me. I'm a minus 20. But if something good will happen to you for the rest of the day, mm. it's fine. Now, this is, this is... So, okay, how do we rectify this? What's like, what do you, what's your... Oh, uh, hello, sir. So, <laughs> if it's still not here by the 8th, which is in two fucking days' time, we'll, let, we'll, we'll then take action. I'm like, what? So I'm supposed to search the building? Kick down doors. <laughs> You've never seen him. That's angry. <laughs> no. I'm supposed but to kick down doors. Can you imagine Smith this afternoon just going knocking on everyone's I've got to set up a fucking podcast. Hey, Excuse me. Can I just um, come on in and just check you he's, haven't robbed my He's going to put a note for everyone's door. Have you seen the PlayStation? I can't because you can only access your own level. Yeah. You can't even access other people's levels. But you could just ride the lift and get out with people. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in there all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But the thing is here, so even if someone saw it and was like, oh, this address, I might take it up there. They can't get here. Someone's so, playing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> How does it make you feel? Distraught. Because yeah. <laughs> that, you know, I've been working pretty hard the last few weeks and months. And I was like, have this. Bit of Just have this. Bit of downtime. It wasn't for you, mate. It wasn't meant for you yeah. today. <laughs> Maybe it's the universe telling you to put your efforts elsewhere. Yeah, not on the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Why aren't I allowed a day off? <laughs> Why can't I just have a day? And do you know what? Sunday night, this was perfect. Not seeing my missus. Just hang out with the boys. Upload some things. That was going to be my little hour. Do you know, for the price I paid for the PlayStation, one hour of just feeling like a kid. And do you know what? I actually said this earlier on. I said, do you know why I'm buzzing about getting a PlayStation? Because you remember when you were a kid, how much of a big deal it was? Mate, the PlayStation was Christmas Day. I had uh, Xbox. Did you? Yeah. I remember that feeling like when my mum used to come down like every month or so she'd take me out shopping and then she would buy me like a new game and then I'd just like read the manual like look at the disc while she's shopping. She's about to spend like six hours shopping I'm there just like oh, looking at this CD. Mate, it's real nostalgic. Like, it's, a bit, it's a bit weird talking about it but I don't think kids these days understand that feeling. Well, you just go and download it online. Now, Even as an yeah. adult when you buy or trainers. Or the Amazon driver steals it. But. The reason you probably still love trainers is that it was a big deal. You had to beg your parents to get a pair of trainers when you are younger. Fucking and then your mum's always trying to knock you down. Mm. Well, why not this pair? I'm like, it's not, it's not a pair. I don't want these Velcro you fucking. You get a pair two sizes up, so you grow into them. <laughs> nah, just me on that. Vel- Vel- Velcro Lacoste. So today, yeah. I was going to have that nostalgic moment where I felt like a child. Mm. Just on but that. Is there like, a big difference though between the PlayStation Four and the Five? Like, why can't you play COD on that one? Why don't we just talk about the PS3 while we're here? All right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. What were you, what were you gonna say? Well, you know, like, you know, the first was, time you watched the film in HD, yeah, you're like, wow. Before you were like, what in HD? Yeah, I'm fine. Mm. You go, I'm fine. Well, like, but when you see something, a bit, a bit like the iPhone, the Blue camera, ray. the camera was never shit until you use the new one. Then you use the new one and you go, this is fucking amazing. And then mm. you preach to you about, I could have done that with the PS5. I don't want to get a virtual reality headset. What are you gonna do with that? Yeah, but see you, the future. Yeah, but you've heard his theory on VR, haven't you? That's where no. we're going. Yeah. VR, yeah. So I reckon, and I would get behind this, right? Imagine you could go to festivals in the metaverse. What, and just stay in your lounge, sending it? Yes. Yeah, so you basically, instead of going physically to having a box at the O2 Arena, you've got, we're here, we've got our own box, and we virtually plug into the box. So let's imagine this, right? Let's say Clapton and a player. It's good. Well, all right, mate. Fucking this is what they discuss. Shit on VR. <laughs> this could be a fair point. I'll put it out to you. So let's say Clapton are playing Harbour Life. They go, okay, you can pay seventy dollars to go there for a ticket, or seventeen dollars you can go in the metaverse. We can sit in your front room. We'll still have to get a bit of MD in, all right? Toilets right there. Yeah, it's true. not a portal. Uh, we can sit here. We got to put the aircon on so we don't get too sweaty. We can experience the whole rave. You don't have to stick any drugs up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he sold. You lost it too. He said, shove drugs up your ass. But you're not going to meet anyone new, are you? Got a missus. <laughs> what about friends? You don't want to make friends? Got enough friends. But is, Got but too many by the sounds of this podcast. But, but hang on, but I, uh, are you still plugged in so you can see other VR lot there? So they'll see you, but they'll when, no, no, no. talk to you. You will see people that are actually there. But okay. as you turn to your right, if three of us go into the metaverse, we'll see each other. Our little cartoon representatives. Oh, okay. But could I walk? Yeah, you can move through the metaverse if you like through the crowd but and stuff. What if I've got my headset on and I'm just getting all excited and open up the balcony doors and then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, but that's that's sick. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Not if I fall off. Well, don't jump over it and don't be a dickhead. But I've got a headset on, so I can't see. Well, sign disclaimer <laughs> for me, right? Because imagine- this is what's going to happen. People are going to fuck themselves up. But well, they're going to do that over on the dance floor yeah. anyway, mm. getting caught with drugs by the police, yeah, and then it'll be like football, like you know, sporting events. Like go to like now like think of like the FIFA World Cup right now we mm. can't logistically it's so difficult to go to Qatar or whatever yeah it's just a pain in the ass was now you can pl- well there would be a world where you could plug in and be there virtually because this TV right I just soon, don't think it's I'm doing with, it for me I'm soon, with, I, it's not doing it for me just yet but I think yeah, you can't but ignore it there are so many things that didn't do it for you until they did it for you right yeah. now in when you open your eyes there's so much of this room you can see and the TV takes up about what ten percent of it yeah. In virtual reality, it's 100%. It's your senses. It's not a room with a TV. You are there as far as your body knows. Have you seen the virtual reality for desktops? No. You know Marcus Brownlee, the guy that has a YouTube channel? He has his laptop in front of him. He puts the VR on. In the VR virtual reality world, his laptop's still there with unlimited screens and his peripherals. So now... So he's on his laptop, but he's got all the screens? Yeah. That's fucked. Because, and but... He can see uh, almost like his surroundings in a similar sense, but imagine turning up to the cafe and putting another monitor next to your laptop. That's mission, right? Imagine taking out a pair of glasses and even just a keyboard, a pair of glasses, and you can just see 10 different monitors. And as you turn your head, you look at different monitors. To be fair, I could see that being something that's useful, yeah. But VR rave, I just, it's not doing it for me. Okay. But then I see you in the morning, you go, Smiths, how was it? I go, I saw Fred again last night. And you go, thought he was in the UK. He was. Thought he was playing Brixton Academy. He was. How did you go there? From my balcony. For $7, okay. I might just stop by for one time. Yeah. Well, let's try. Let's try it. Well, what about going around like your family's house for dinner? So like your parents have got the VR kit and they're like, oh, James, we're going to cook. They don't tell them that. But like, you know, we're going to cook you dinner tonight. And, you know, you and the missus put your VR set and then. You're in a live space. Fucking, like cheap, space fucking cheaper than going back to the UK. No jet lag. You know what I mean? It's not a bad shout. Oh, what am I going to do? Spend 10 grand on flights going back to the UK to see my family for dinner or just do it in the metaverse? Flights, are, point. F- flights are fucked. They are right? fucked at the moment. Yeah. Speaking of keen, flights, you keen, just went to Melbourne. Keen to get everyone's, all the listeners' opinion on VR. Maybe we'll put a little poll up to see what people Use think. the comments because you should be watching this on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, mate. Went to Melbourne for the, for the weekend. Uh, George was down there working for the week and then what was that for Did just just randomly yeah she was there for work and then I, I can't be a day or a second without her so I had to go and see make sure she wasn't chatting to any boys yeah fair. that's <laughs> probably what you was doing <laughs> <laughs> but um now I went to Mr Miyagi's which uh went there with Smiths and Willits before actually yeah it's nice. lovely and then what um, do they do the tacos yeah got the tacos steak um do you know what Melbourne when we first went when was that? Was that like that was pr- almost like four years ago when me Smith and Willits first? Twenty nineteen, and it's where mm. it's where the, the word poos started to to get a bit of a role to it. Because remember we went out for dinner that time and we met uh, the one of the girls that James met in Coachella, and <laughs> Willits introduced himself as Oh, you're Coachella puss. <laughs> she was like, "Excuse me." She's like, "What'd what you call me? <laughs> what'd you call me?" So um, got a lot of history, Melbourne. What do you reckon? Uh, better than Sydney or not? You know what? I think and the why city's not? better. It was it was less people, a bit. Uh, everyone's a bit more fashionable. The beaches here, are obviously, a lot lot better. But I think there's a bit more of a vibe to Melbourne, but it's just to me, it, the, there's there's no beach. And I, I moved to Sydney for the beaches. So, do you know what we need? A Sydney to Melbourne bullet train. Yeah, where you could get there in twenty minutes. All right, because Melbourne to me, culture brilliant, people different, accent. Oh, Invisalign, mm. Invisiflex. Oh, talk about Invisalign. So like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> do you remember the previous podcast when you talk about Linda? Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. It's now George has got Invisalign. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically Melbourne. It's great. Is it worth flying? Because fly, I'm fucking over getting on planes. Let me tell you that. 
going to the airport, waiting for your flight, make sure you're at the right gate, packing your bags, not knowing if you're ever going to see it again, they do, landing. They don't get, do business, do they, to, to Melbourne? But for me... Yeah. It's not even that. It's still the same trauma. You're just sat in a slightly different position. <laughs> yeah, how angry is he? Wait, Amazon, just forget it. <laughs> <laughs> for me, catching a plane out here is the equivalent of catching a train in England. Because it's so easy. I've literally, in my old house when we were in Waterloo, mm. I used to wake up, set my alarm for 30 minutes before boarding time, and I used to make the plane. Cheers, How mate. about that? <clears throat> it's just long. You, you don't like it though, do you, Smith? It's just like, I've just done a lot of it, mate. I've done a lot of it recently. This year, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, do you, what, do, you, what do you both think of Melbourne? It's all right. I couldn't live there. No? The food looks good. Is good, tastes good, good good food places. People are better, jiu-jitsu's better, food's better, but the weather is just dog shit. It's just pretty bad, mm. it's pretty bad. So for that reason, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yeah, so another tangent, been looking at rescue dogs. Oh yeah. Got my PR now. Mate. How, how did that feel coming through? Yeah, it's two points there. Interesting, right? Because everything that I thought would be massive wasn't that massive. You hit a million followers, you're like, oh, is that it? There was an element to that. It's more relief than it is happiness or gratitude. It's just like, oh, that's nice. What do you think is going to change in the way that you're going to conduct yourself now here? And before that, where were you when you found out? So first question, every trip I've made, every time I've been here, there's always been an expiry date. So let's say... It's my mum's birthday. If my visa is expiring two weeks after, I would say, nah, fuck your birthday. I'll come home two weeks after because there's no point in me going home than coming back for seven days. Mm. So I had to work my life around my visa expiry dates all the time. Yeah. So that was something that I had to get very accustomed to. So now I can just go and come as I please. To your question, every morning for two and a half years, I searched my emails on my phone, which I never do. I always do my emails on my desktop. But I'd wake up, I go to my WhatsApps, I make sure no one's died. Then I go to my emails, I swipe down, and I would just wait to see if my visa was there for two and a half years. Mm. And this one day it was there. Fucking buzzing. And where were you? Uh, at my mum and dad's house. It was my mum's birthday as well. So I was just there, just having a cup of coffee in the morning. Then when I saw it, obviously when you've been waiting two and a half years for something to turn up, I had to go print it out to make sure it was real. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, it's be a really shit fucking day if I print it out, tell everyone I got PR, and then look mm. at it, and I'm like, oh wait, no, I don't. To be fair, the only place you'd have a printer is at your mum and dad's house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, that felt good. I bet Willis has got one in there. <laughs> but yeah, it was just, just fucking nice. You know, I'm on my way to being an Australian now. So, dog. You, you, you pretty much dog. are, really, now. You just got, like, there's no difference between that and citizenship, really. Yeah, I'm going to show you the dog that I've inquired for. Oh, this is Have proper far on, down um, the line, mate, then. We, we've also, we've been on a website called Pet Rescue. Yeah, is that's, that, is that yeah, the one Pet Rescue, yeah. yeah. Oh, you've been doing mate, it as yeah, well. Yeah, I've been looking as well. Like, um, Would you know what they say? Having a dog's, like, the first test in a relationship. Having a mm. pet. Yeah. But, like, I, I didn't really know the world of rescue. I always thought, like, just... If, whatever dog you want, go and get one. But she's really keen to, she's like, look, there's so many dogs out there don't have a home and mate, the more you spend on like pet rescue, they're so cute. But then people talk about them. Like I've never really had a, I've, I've never actually had a dog, but people always talk about rescue dogs have something, you know, they're prone to maybe lashing out. At a, oh, that is cute. Can you change its what, name? What breed is it? Oh yeah, change that name. It's Kelpie. It's called Taffy for everyone. Thoughts, that's thoughts, thoughts on Kelpies? Because apparently they need a lot of work. Yeah, but the moment it's in a kennel. So it's, yeah, it's not funny, but isn't no, it? no, no. I appreciate this. Yeah, so yeah, go on. if I if I got a purebred kelpie off a farm, it probably wouldn't be the best place. One, I do live in an apartment, mm. and everyone's like, you haven't got enough room for it. Yeah, but the idea is that you don't keep it in here all day. You take it out for a big exercise in the morning, big exercise in the evening. If there's any days I'd be out, I'd happily pay a dog walker. Yeah. How does uh, Willits feel about it? Uh, it's saying he, he if he listens to the podcast, he'll find out. <laughs> And if he doesn't, I'll just come in with a dog one day. So why do you think he's getting the PlayStation 5, mate? No, he actually, he's, he's all right. I've run it past him. And if he had yeah. a problem, I actually really need an office yeah. space. <laughs> I've already thought it If he has a problem, I'm going to kick him out <laughs> and, and I'm going to turn his room into a fucking dog room. Like Willis is one of my best mates. I've known him 10 years. But if he said, pick the dog on me, I'd have, a, I'd have an office. 
<laughs> so then um, the idea is that it'd be a uh, joint responsibility between me and the other half. Yeah. And, you know, any times that we couldn't do it. But in the morning, I'm thinking, I like to go to Bronte for a dip. It's just going to be 20 minutes on the grass for an tennis ball beforehand. And then... Yeah. Uh, they don't if you have a back garden in a yard they never exercise in it they just use it to go out to the toilet and mm. like to roam around which would be nice but again let's say I'm here for another year or whatever we've got the rooftop here uh, there's plenty of parklands or whatever but you are taking a dog to look after it you're taking it from a position of not having a home if there is a day I've only walked her once or twice I'll look at her and go you were living in a fucking cage <laughs> I I just, so shut up <laughs> you did like that <laughs> Yeah, it's quite good actually. So yeah. you're you're gonna get one as well, yeah. <laughs> Mate, yeah so what dog are you thinking looking, about getting? Um, do you know what? Here's the thing. I've always wanted a German Shepherd, but practically no, no chance. Yeah, yeah, I know you can't in an apartment block. They're too big. Um, we there was this really cute stuffy that needs rescuing. Yeah. Um, but it's nine months old and it, it looks pretty big. And one of the problems that it's got is that it gets really excited around other dogs. And um, so imagine every, how, imagine that, how annoying that is. You're at a cafe and it sees another dog and it just fucking goes ballistic. So I've got to train it. Well, we've got to train it. But, but do you know, I think it'd be a good yeah. test as well of uh, what you're like as a parent. It's like one foot in. It's like dipping yeah. a foot That's in. That's what I mean. It's the first thing that you do in a couple to see before you have kids, really. Yeah. So yeah, you're pretty much testing If you make it through, yeah, the dog stay, then you'll probably be all right do you, for kids. Did you get one or? No, because see, with t- both of my ex-relationships, I had... A dog the first time around, Pomeranian. <laughs> Did you? That's gone. Yeah. Second relationship had a cat. That's gone. So I thought, third time lucky. Don't get the fucking animal and the relationship might last. <laughs> oh, did you get the animal for him? Yeah, well, I think it was that like, well, you know, the relationships were a little bit, bit on the rocks. Yeah, Let's okay. Let's get a cat. Yeah. Let's get a cat. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, I'm definitely not in that position. I just feel like I've got a lot of love to give to a dog. Yeah, you've always maybe, wanted yeah, one, to be fair. How many people go, they get a dog, they're on the sofa with the dog and go, fucking hell, that was a waste of time. People are actually more inclined to tell me not to have kids than they are to not have a dog. But this is why I think maybe you should get the dog for you. Yeah? And same for you. Get it for you. Do you know what? Yeah. And I'm sick to death of asking permission for shit. <laughs> I found out at 32, I'm still asking for permission. Not in my missus, just in life. Yeah, like what? I'm going to get a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing it safe for so long in life. Why are you know? What if, what if, what if? Yeah. I've run out of excuses. <laughs> I've inquired for taffy. Yeah. Yeah. And a tattoo. Cute. Why don't you get taffy tattoo? Yeah. A bit too soon. <laughs> Would you change the name, do you say? Well, the thing is, two things that I was a bit... One, it's a girl. I did want to get a boy. But the girls are a lot more tame. Mm. And it's Why been, did you want a boy out of interest? Um, I've already decided the name. Okay. Oh. Alfie. Yeah, Why yeah, can't yeah. the girl be called Alfie? Yeah. And it's already been de-sexed. And I actually don't like it when dogs are seen to. Mm. I think it's... I know, they're, obviously. They're what, sorry, I'm well, then it can familiar. definitely like, be they, called Alfie. The, so pretty much the dogs have their nuts chopped off. Okay. And they, say, they call it de-sexed or seen yeah, to. Yeah. Where they pretty much stop the dog from being able to reproduce. And I get it. If you're running like a, a rescue kennel center you're like oh cool there's too many dogs but for me especially with dogs if you chop their nuts off for right for humans a woman goes through menopause their life gets a lot harder a man if he gets castrated for any reasons his quality of life diminishes quite quick really um, have you seen the imitation game no no dominic cumberpatch whatever it's called about the guy that cracked the enigma code i think i have yeah fucking sick film yeah but he was uh homosexual (laughs) And that was a crime back then. So they kept chemi- chemically castrated him. So when a man Where was he from? English. Okay. How does that work? Chemically? They pretty much kill your nuts Ooh. without chopping them off. And uh, he killed himself within like a year, I think. So if your testicles stopped working or you had some castration for testicular cancer, whatever it is, if your, horm- if your testicles aren't producing testosterone, you're in a bad bit of health. So why do we see it completely okay to just lop a dog's bollocks off? It, has, has that been tested on animals? Like, is it the same for obviously that has that effect on humans? Well, you know, they used to like dock the tails on dogs just because they like the look of it. And then someone was like, actually, that's really fucking cruel to cut a dog's tail off. Well, it's like dopamine, isn't it, with their ears up? Yeah. yeah. Soon we're going to get to the point where they're like, when you chop a dog's lots off, they say the dogs are a lot easier to manage. They're a lot nicer. They're a lot yeah. docile. I'm not surprised. You just halted its testosterone. What about, um, and this is probably going too scientific, but you know, when uh, blokes get the surge with a snip, yeah. Does that, yeah. Does that have any... No, nah, that just affects your tubes where semen comes out through, I think. Yeah. Okay. So that just prevents your semen. You, you don't negate your testicular output. You just stop the 
a sperm from reaching the eggs. Okay, good to know. Just Wait, in case. Not, not for, I just, no, I'm just, I'm just learning. So like, I would, <laughs> I'm a host, but I'm learning. Fair enough. <laughs> the girl, the girls go through heat. So you sometimes need to get like a nappy for them. You can actually put a little nappy on them. And then um, other dogs go wild around them when they're on heat. And then the guy, the dogs, the male dogs also are going to be a lot more of a handful. But, and I bet every dog trainer is cringing right now. I reckon I could handle. <laughs> I'll be like, listen, you horny little goat. Don't come at me with a boner and stop sniffing around other dogs' little pumpins, right? And I'll be firm but fair with the Alfie. With, with the that, Alfie. Alfie? So, yeah. And I think so that's that, the other thing you're not too keen on. Yeah, she's... but no, but at the end of the day, Taffy needs a home. It's four hours away near Wagga Wagga. I'll drive. Mm. I'll drive four hours to go look at a dog. Oh, but the thing you'll is, be though, coming home with it if you go, go four hours. You'll how many be coming people home go and see a dog and just, nah, fuck that, drive back? You'll, yeah, you'll be getting exactly. It. And even if it was the worst decision, I'd dedicate 10 years of my life looking after this dog and giving it a good home. See, the one we what looked at is a, I think it's a staff, and they've got a bad reputation. Nah, it's, I don't think it's a re- legit one, though. No, but when you actually, yeah, when you look at, do the research, it's not true. They're actually really, but they look scary. Yeah, if you is had to. Is it on the round nose? Uh, it, they're mixed, so it's that and yeah, a. Yeah. Does that staffy know that you're a blue belt? With one stroke. <laughs> but do you know what? I didn't grow up with dogs. So like I've got this thing where I kind of shit myself when I first see one. So if it kind of barks, my default is to get a little bit scared. But that's just not growing up with... Uh, is the dog you're looking at a, in Sydney? Pardon? Is the dog you're looking at in Sydney? Yeah, uh, yeah, New South Wales. Okay. Oh, that narrows yeah. it down to fucking a size of land, <laughs> the size of fucking France and Spain next yeah, to each like, other. Yeah, it's like 50 miles. I don't know how far okay, the way yeah, it is. Yeah. Far. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's a good thing to do. And like, there are dogs in need. So I went and well, got. If you're getting first. one, I'm getting one then. Do you know what caught my? As long as it doesn't smell, that's like the thing for me. It's got to not smell and malt. But you're lucky if you get that from your missus. Not alone. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> yeah, I saw one. It was one year old, but it was a kelpie mixed with dingo. Oh, and dingoes are the wild dogs. That what yeah. a, explain what a dingo is to those who. Don't. It's like a wild. It's a wild Australian dog, and. Um, I believe it was border collies that came from the Scottish and British people that came over that mated with the dingoes to make kelpies. Really? I could be come wrong. There's a lot of dog experts going, you fucking idiots. Yeah. Saying <laughs> enough confidence. Reckon, so. but the thing is, right, dog, dog the dog will have air con, right? I didn't have air con for my first four years here, right? I reckon it's, it's going to live on the balcony majority. No, 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 no. Keep him out of the sun. Right? Have a, he or she can have a bit of time in the sun. There'll be a dog's bed out there. You could build a dog bed, yeah. There'll be a dog bed out there. I obviously teach it very early on. Stay away from the balcony. I've got a little crevice in my room that the dog's bed can go in. Nice. So it's, I'm, and do you know what? I was like, I might even start running again when I get a dog. You'll see me in six months' time. I will look so much healthier. You'll go, what was your secret? Dog. Dog. <laughs> running through Centennial. Yeah, I think you got the perfect Kelby. setup one, to be honest. Well, Lindell showed me this thing earlier, right? And it's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, right, is on TikTok. He found a frog on his um, fence in his back garden. And <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like the octopus story. <laughs> it's, just, it's great to have you back, but go on. So he found this frog on the, on the garden on the fence. Yeah, okay. And he thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build that frog at home. <laughs> I've seen this. <laughs> and he builds like this little house for the frog on the fence. And then he just like keeps upgrading it, upgrading it and putting it in a swimming pool. And he's just blogging his little story of creating this frog a house Mate, that lives on his fence. The frog doesn't even stay in the fence. Though, so he spent all this time building this house and the frog's like, nah, fuck that. And he just stays next to it. So he wasted his time, to be honest with you. Cheers, Sonny. So you could do something <laughs> like that on the balcony for your dog. Yeah, you're, so basically, what Sonny's saying, you're going to put all this effort into building something nice for the dog, but you'll just have it in your bed. Do you, are you one of those that dog, dog in the bed or not? Yeah, dog in the bed. But what, what I might consider doing is if there was anyone that I knew that could build something that was reliable and that could last <laughs> not cam uh, I want to get like a little bed made next to my bed Okay. so I, I can say to the dog Alfie you can put your nose on the bed mm. but this is your space here if he comes in that's fine but you know when you try and when you live with a dog right you give them all the space in the world they want to sleep between your legs so you're laying on your back you're watching TV that's fine and then when you want to go to bed you kind of pull the bed sheets up and you try and levitate the dog so you can move it into another position and then they just roll back in between your legs so that's the main trouble you have I had a dog at home for 10 years Archie rest in peace now he uh, would always do the same so I kind of want to be like if I ever need to wake him up put him in that little bit there like, that's that's your bed son mm. alright you stay then there. you'll be in it when you're in the dog yeah. house 
Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So like, um, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I think it'd be cool. And then it will just, yeah. It'd just be nice to have a little dog. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And then if Ferris is out, I'll come down and walk your dog. We live in the same block. Yeah, we do. Do you want to tell people how that happened? It's like friends. Um, couldn't, couldn't fathom being away from you, mate. Um, Can you chuck some more teasers, please? No, nah, when, we, when we moved out, so when Cam, Cam left. Yeah, we, we've spoken about this properly. No, nah, not really. What, Cam leaving? Cam just fucking pulled the plug. Yeah, just one day he sends a message and going, hey, lad, I put, put my flight back to the UK. Going back to North London. <laughs> And then we were like, oh, cheers, mate. And he just fucking did a runner. But when we've seen him in London, I reckon he is on the rocks about coming back, potentially, yeah. 100%. But, mm. like, no, throw him under the bus more. I can't even. <laughs> I think, I, I don't know. I, like the, I think everyone had that. He's like, I'm done. I was like, all right, mate. I, I remember my first hangover. <laughs> so then he was like, I, you definitely look a different place in the world with rose tint lenses on, don't you? Yeah, he was thinking about it for a while, though. And... I think it came off the back of like the whole locked in syndrome where we hadn't gone anywhere for so long. He did have a little two week trip back home and everyone kind of, I think everyone, I think you go through cycles where you need a bit of change. Um, but we were still, living in a four bed at the time. Yeah. And I think we, we moved in I think during, during the pandemic, wasn't it? During full lockdown. So it was like four of us, which I've, do you know what I'm so grateful for? There's a lot of people who live by themselves who've just lost, we've mentally lost the plot. I've worked with a few people that just have never been the same. And I think having four of us there was great. But I think that cycle obviously eventually comes to an end and you everyone starts to think about what, what's the next thing or... And, but for him, I think he was just... He kept talking about England, England so much. But like all of us, we haven't been home properly in about home. four years. So you don't know what life is really like. You know, if you go back for two weeks... And, and I think he's probably still figuring it out, mm. you know. Um, I think to, to pack up and leave, you, you're you obviously 50-50 probably. So I think it's enough. Like I would never just go, right, I'm just going to go back home. So I think he wanted to. Yeah. And, and maybe he, he will stay there, but I think there'll always be a, I don't know. I feel like wherever you go, there you are. Lord said that to me. So like the, the wherever you go, on, go in the world, but. He seemed like he was on good form when I saw him in London. Yeah. Beer will do that to you. Yeah. Having a few beers, put anyone on form. But we, we miss him. I miss him. Yeah. Um, but then he fucking done us in. We're in a four bed. <laughs> And we were a perfect balance of yin and yang in that house. And the but did you like living in the four bed house? Yeah, it was, all you together? It, it was beautiful. Now, what happened was... But that place went anyway, doesn't it? You couldn't stay there. Well, yeah, because then we were like, right, we're going to get another tenant. I look in my inbox. Who wants the room? Nathan Joseph. I said, I'm out. <laughs> I said, I'm out. Really? I said, take my money. Why didn't you want to live with him? <laughs> Just not stooping to that level. No. Is he still in Bali? Fuck it, no, no, boys. Is. Um, he's, he's still trying to recline back from that sofa when we asked him a question on that podcast that time. So Nathan, introduce yourself. Um. <laughs> no, I basically like, you, well, whoever we put in that room could yeah. never fill calm shoes. Mm, so no. then it was time to, uh, to leave. So then we, we moved in here. So we all go through this traumatic pain, saying goodbye to him. Cam had about 15 fucking leaving dues. And then he leaves and then he's yeah. all, I might come back. I'm like, you don't get to. Not that easy, son. Not after yeah. what you put us through. But I, I hear he's been shooting up flares for moving into a new place already. Is really? Some of the lads, yeah. With he's the, already got a place lined up in Jan and Feb. What, in London? Mm. With uh, Fred and stuff? Uh, well, Freddie can't come back, can he? No, no, for here. Oh, really? For here, yeah. Because uh, he's started the new podcast with Freddie, but he goes... If it don't involve jitsu or birds, he ain't interested. Oh, Fred. Mm. Oh, for the podcast. He doesn't mm. want to talk about it. Oh, so there's potential time. he might come back in February time. <clears throat> yeah, January, February time. Well, if he comes back, brilliant. If not... He fitted a nice front door for my mum and dad, so I will give him credit grateful. on that. They do have fallen to... fallen off. Yeah. <laughs> they do now have to leave. <laughs> That's the injured. They do have to keep two keys outside now. Because <laughs> the door does jam a bit. <laughs> Apparently it's the lock, not the door. It's the lock, yeah. not the door. Oh, so, um, but he's never going to get a job now in Sydney, is he? Well, oh, yeah. How's, how's your place, Sonny? Have you, are you moving at all? Or? Mate, I look all the time on realestate.com, whatever it is, and there's just no houses at the moment. They're, mate, rental prices are fucking stupid. Mm. And I've got good good rental at the moment, and it's nice. It's just not one of those things you need to flex on. <sighs> mate, I'd, I'd love a bigger house, but I'm not paying 10 grand a month for rent. It's stupid. And that is exactly what you need to do to jump into a three or four bed, a nice one. 
So, Do you know what's mad, right? This is going to sound really outrageous to say it, but I'll say it anyway. I earn good money and I can't afford to do much. No. <laughs> Explain. So like, I would say I earn a good amount of money, but when I look at the price of houses, I go, I can't afford that. 100%. That, but that's the way it is. That's it, though, isn't it? And like with a car, right? <clears throat> It's all well and good having a car on finance. I said this to Darren. He won't mind me throwing him under the bus. He bought a brand new Range Rover. I said, you can't really afford that. You can afford the repayments, but you can't afford that. And people seem to think if you can afford the repayments, you can afford it. This part of that book that you've been reading. Mm, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Good book. Oh, I've heard about this. I've heard it's good. good book. So it's very good. And like, I was thinking, it's not a flex if you take on debt to flex. Well, there's two ways of looking Apart at it. Apart from a mortgage. Yeah, okay. Go on, Sonny. I, the way I look at it is if you have to sink all the money into it to buy it up front, then you don't get to use that money for other investments. And that's my theory behind it. It makes more sense to pay it off in over time so that you can use the other money to invest in something that's going to make you more yeah. money. But with the home, that's one thing. But with the car, if you, if you buy a 200 grand car, this isn't a personal attack, or you buy a 30 grand car, you still have a car. With a house... You, you can take on the debt for a four-bed house because you might need a four-bed house. You might have three kids and a wife. Mm. But you don't need to take on the debt for a car. That's a no. pretty stupid choice in retrospect because then you've got to pay finance, you've got to pay the money back for the money that you borrow, you've got to pay the petrol on the engine that's really big, you've got to do all these things. You now have this accumulative debt that could potentially hinder your ability to, to own a house that you live in. Yeah. Or you could look at it in the sense that having finance options does allow you to have what you want sooner, which is also good. Which is again, touching your future, as Lucy Lord calls it. Yeah, and I, I like the ability to be able to do that in the same way like you know you'd potentially rent a house now because you can't buy a $5 million house. Or And I'm playing devil's advocate because we both yeah. have Porsches on finance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. But like, I've come to the realisation that from here on in, this is the... So, uh, after the last book tour, mm. I sat down and I was like, I could buy a nice place in Sydney. But I can't really, because no. I don't want to own a massive mortgage on a house. And people go, what are you going to do? I said, well, hopefully I'll work hard for a few more years and I'll be able to just buy one. They go, well, what, what if you, you buy it outright? Yeah. And or, you need three or, four, three or four million, really. Or I want to put down 75%. Is that it? I want to put... It's not, people think this is crazy. When I buy a house, yeah. it's obviously a very privileged position to be in, but I'd like mm. to put down 75%. Because then I'm only paying off a bit back. Because the banks are cunts, right? The debt, the, the amount of debt that young people are in, the amount of credit card debt, the amount of, you know, uh, spread your payments, the payday loans, all of this shit is fucking up young people. And if you look to it, it's the banks that, in my eyes, fuck the most people with this, just as much as the government. And then we bail the banks out whenever they fuck up. Mm. Mm. I want to buy another house in the UK, but I just don't know whether now's the right time. You're Six months it, time, I think. Bristol, Mm. so um, there's if the interest rates don't come down enough a lot of people when, they're, when their term on their mortgages come up they're going to be in a lot of trouble so I was chatting my yeah. parents about this like my parents they're like oh if the interest rates are anywhere above 2-3% come the end of their mortgage term they'll lose their home like there's no option yeah. for them so yeah. I, my mum and dad now like oh son <laughs> do you want to want to get the mortgage yeah. like so you're in this position there's a lot of tricky people and this is the fucked up thing so let's say a massive amount of the population get to a point where they can't afford their mortgage that means a massive amount of the population end up selling their homes so this isn't financial advice i could be completely wrong with this but if a massive percentage of the uk population try and sell their house at the same time that's going to bring the prices of houses down because of the amount of demand to the amount of um People that need a home compared to demand. Now, the worst case scenario would be that people end up in negative equity. Imagine someone three months ago scraped up all the money they could together and someone said to them, the best thing you do with your money is buy a home. They buy it for 200 grand. Then for whatever reasons, they can't afford it. But now the price of their house is only worth 175K and they have to sell. Mm. They will then sell their home and then end up still owing a bank 25,000 pounds. Yeah, be shit. So that's, that's the one thing because it, it is pretty crazy that in life everyone seems to think that buying a home is the only investment you can make. Yeah, there's, it's definitely not and I think people need to be more open-minded to invest in things that actually bring them enjoyment as well because like I said, 
we've, we've spoken about this before on the podcast, buying a house, everyone says, yeah, it's going to make you feel so financially secure. Having a property it didn't make me feel any more financially secure when I got one. Do you think it's different as a as a topic being in England, growing up in England? Because I feel like back home, it's people, first thing you do is they flex on like, get a car on finance, yeah. get a nice car, and then it's mortgage, get Mac. Like, I feel like those are the highlight. Whereas I feel like here... I rarely hear people talking about, yeah, I'm looking at a property, I'm going to put, like, it's just, oh, cool. But I think they're older than us, that's why. I think they're 10 years older. I think people close to 40 are doing that. But the thing is, back then, for those people, they could have worked a few years and put a good deposit down on the mortgage. Now, Mm. I said this yesterday. Average property price here is a million dollars. The average salary is 90 grand. So if someone put put away 100% of what they earned, it would still take 20 years to buy that, because you think 90 grand after tax, what you got, 60? Call it $1,000 a week. Cool. But you've got costs of living, of bills, of petrol, which is fucking yeah. outrageous. How the fuck is someone on an average salary of 90 grand supposed to afford a, a house that's a million? I think even someone that's on 200 grand, if you live in eastern suburbs or in Sydney, is going to struggle to put much more than Isn't three it, to four in grand Australia, away each it, month. It's 40 times more expensive per salary. So back... Rewind like 50 years, the value of a house was here, the salaries were here. Now it's like 40 times more expensive for a house and salaries are only like 3% or three times higher or whatever. There's a massive gap between that. So then don't you think it's good that people can rent the house that they want then and not have to worry about buying one? Yeah, I like renting. Because they then end up getting to enjoy their life a little bit more and have a little bit more freedom with their money rather than having it tied up in a house. So this is what I've been thinking as well. So let's say... Uh, I've come to the conclusion I can't afford a house in Sydney. So what I might do is buy something that I don't want to live in. So I might, I've been looking at some two beds down by the beach, two beds, two baths. What, in Bondi? Yeah, in Bondi, Tamayama, Bronte, something like that that needs renovating a bit of work. I'll literally put all my cash into that. You get Cam to come over and do the work. Yeah. I've well. already spoken to him about it. I said that I'll try and sponsor him on a visa. So let's say I put a million dollars into buying a property here that is two bed, two bath. I know that I could rent that for $500 a room a week. At least, yeah. So that's $1,000 a week in my pocket, even though I've sunk all my money into that. Then if I get bummed with an interest rate, because I'm not living in it, it's a business cost. So you can actually write off the interest rate if you have tenants. Mm. So isn't it crazy? This is the world we live in. Not many people own businesses. But if you had enough money to scrape together to buy a home, you'd be better off buying a home and having tenants and renting yourself. Because then all yeah. of your costs in the, in the property you own, you could write off. But the, okay. when, if you live into the property that you buy, it's not an investment, it's a liability because it's not putting money in your pocket. So when people buy a home as an investment, it's technically a liability because it takes money out of your pocket, not putting it in. So then if I put tenants in a house that I bought and remained renting here, any costs in that property I could write off, including the interest on the mortgage. So the interest hike will affect and disaffect people that live in their own homes more than people that rent out homes. And this is like another way, and again, I could be wrong on this. This is another way that the wealthy people aren't really affected as much as the middle class and the working class. Mm. The people that get bummed the most in economic times are usually the, it's not the wealthy people. They've got ways around paying tax. Yeah, yeah. Even so. when, when you sit in business class on a plane, <laughs> you look at everyone, you go, none of you are on pay as your own salary, very little. None of you are actually paying for this flight, your businesses are. That's why it's called business class. Mm. Speaking of travel, a little tangent from houses, Dubai, what was it like when you were there just recently? Sick. Yeah. Most I've ever enjoyed it. Why? It's got a bit of a perception, isn't it? People like go, oh yeah, it's sick for like three days and then... Do you know um, what? The, the, t- the reason I loved it this time was when I got there, I trained at a sick jiu-jitsu gym called Team Nagira. I rolled with this, uh, this lad, he was a purple belt. And that night, he messaged me and goes, uh, the Sheikh of Sharjah region, or the Emirati of Sharjah, has invited you to come to his, what's it called? called uh, Mahram. It's like a, it's like a chilling front room. Yeah. So I get invited by one of the royal family to go to his house. I think I, that's right anyway. But yeah. Was it like a, no, wasn't like a Majid or something? No, no, no. Oh, uh, you might have just swore in, in Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> Let me Google it. I think but, I said it right, but I could have fucking said something. <laughs> <laughs> and like when I was, Sorry. when I was going uh, on the way there, I was chatting to this Egyptian guy and I was like, you know, I said to him, the UAE can freak me out a little bit. In case yeah. I do something wrong. He goes, my friend, three things. If you don't do wrong with these three things, you're in the safest place in the world. 
He goes, drugs, don't do drugs. Politics, stay out of it. And don't talk shit about the royal family. He goes, if you don't do those three things, you are safe. Sorry, the word was majlis. Majlis. Majlis, yeah. What does that mean? Majlis. It's like, an, it's like a, a living room, like a big open, and it all faces the inside, and you usually have like a... So then kiss. I was there, I was like, I'm not taking drugs, I'm not chatting shit about royal families, I'm not doing those things. And he was explaining to me about... Is this in, in this house you're having this No, no, it's in the car on the way there. Okay, so I was yeah. saying to him, can I bring my missus? No. <laughs> can I wear shorts? No sexy shorts. <laughs> That's what he said. He was like, I really wanted to make sure I didn't like offend... Yeah. And uh, yeah, on the way there, he was explaining to me and he was saying, uh, in the UAE, they're actually police that sit in restaurants and bars, they over listen to your conversations. Well, like undercover. Yeah. So, like, but you got your thobe as well, didn't you? Yeah. Not, like, so. Did he give you that? Or yeah, did he? yeah. No, the, the Sheikh did. Um, Sheikh Tariq Al Qasimi. And uh, on the way there, he was actually like relaxing me a bit. He goes, This place is so safe because of the way it is, because of the culture. And he was saying that. When you hear about, he was talking from an Egypt perspective, he goes, and Ferris, you've been great helping me understand Islam quite well, a lot more than when I first did. He was like, people think we don't let our wives drive because we're horrible people. He goes, but in my country, in Egypt, it's not safe. If your wife drives the car and she gets a flat tire or it breaks down, there are very unkind men that will do very bad things to your wife. And I believe under the Quran and in Islam, it is your responsibility to take the responsibility of something bad happening to your wife. So to fulfill their role to Allah they kind of say those things don't go out without me because if something bad happens it's haram like you know so yeah, yeah. and when he said it to me like that I was like fair enough but he goes those same people in Dubai their wives walk the street no hijab like nothing they're free they can drive on their own do whatever because if the likeliness of something bad happening to them is so much less likely yeah and even the police in Dubai really uphold a really high level of respect for women so that if a woman breaks down on the road, he goes, the police will get there. They'll stop. They will make sure that there's a lane of cl traffic closed till the breakdown people come. Like, and it really uh, kind of relaxed me a bit when someone actually told me what it was like. Because in the UK, they're like, oh, don't touch a woman's waist or you go jail 15 years. Yeah. But do you yeah. know what? I, I think this, we probably have had a better experience than some people I may have had in the Middle East. And obviously I've mm. got good friends there in, in Saudi Arabia and every time I've been there I've been treated so well and had an amazing time and I'm sure people go there and have bad experiences but it's very different in in my opinion yeah than than what a lot of people um, perceive it to be Mate, and, and that's it and everyone was super friendly super kind and when I looked at Dubai through that lens of being super safe then the watch collections bro there I saw two Richard Miles in the flesh I know you're supposed to call them Richard Mills but it just sounds cool if you call them Miles <laughs> and um so are they actually called richard mills yeah richard mills we, oh, i want to i want to hear the rest of the story about the guy's house so i get to shake Tariq al kasimi's house and he was it of, big like was it well it's not actually his house you go to the majlis majlis yeah so you don't go Hang to on, his house. i don't actually know this but is it not part of his house no no because he has his gym there he sits there with the boys Mate, the they he's got his own black belt jujitsu instructor yes so he himself mm. is a is a champion black belt jujitsu yeah. athlete so I go there and talk to me. He goes, let me tell you where you are. This is a big front room. We sit here, we drink tea, we watch football. And I said, you know what? I said, I respect your culture. You've got some very sociable habits. You know, mm -hmm. even Ramadan, you'll come together, you sit together food. He goes, it's lovely that you say that, but usually it's 15 of us sat here on our phones. <laughs> and I was like, fair enough. And he's chatting to me and he's talking to me about, um, we need to get you a golden visa. You need to come here. What's a golden visa? It's a 10-year visa in uh, Dubai. But he goes, there's no place in the world where you could get uh, um, like a nanny for your kids for 500 US dollars a month. And he goes, then for another $500, you get a maid who does your cooking and your cleaning. He goes, if you want to raise a family, come to Dubai to do it because we get labor from other countries. And Pakistan's a two hour flight away. You've got India. You've actually got so many countries near Dubai where they just open their borders because it's such a strict place where people behave themselves. Their yep. immigration policy is a lot looser. Like imagine trying to get a maid from the Middle East to get a visa to come to the UK. Yeah. Take it 10 years, your kids will be in uni by the time the visa comes through. <laughs> so, um, like, uh, yeah, so he's chatting to me about this and even he saying to me about all these things. Then at 8.30 p.m. he just goes, let's roll. So we go through. Uh, oh, so you went there and trained? Yeah. yeah. Went through to his gym. There's a black belt waiting on the map. I go, do you live here? He goes, yes. It's just Brazilian dedicated black to him. Belt. But then all these world champions, Anderson Silva went over there and trained with him, yeah. Steven Seagal. When a sheikh says, come train, you go train. <laughs> and I, will, I won't lie, 
I heard a rumor that he got his blue belt in three months. So I was like, is this guy just getting given his belt? He fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> he probably is training in there hard like, every day. <laughs> me up. I want to know what gives you the title, Sheikh. Shake. Shake, yeah. So you got, I think, seven different Emirati royal families. So you got Dubai, I think if I pronounce it right, Sharjah, you got Abu Dhabi. Uh, then you've got another one that's further up. But then his son was there, and his son went to like uni in Kent. So he's a very westernized, like, you look yeah, at him, okay. you wouldn't. I was like, you technically a shake as well? He goes, yeah, I go, do your friends know? <laughs> and he's like, some of them. I was like, yeah. that's sick. Imagine that. It's like, oh, should we go to Dubai? Yeah. By the way, P.S. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty cool. What worked. about our, our other matey boy? Has he got a Majlis? Um, Mohammed. Yeah, Mohammed. Mohammed's got like a. His gym is absolutely sick. He's just kicked it out with some new stuff, actually. You want a Coke? From, uh, from Black Box. Shout out Black Box for the hook up with that as well. Um, he's got, yeah, just a sick gym, ice bar. Better than most gyms I've ever been to anywhere in the world. And it's just for him to train in. But all his family's still training there as well. There's a hangout house there. Um, where he hangs out with the boys and watch TV and stuff as well. So I think it's like a same thing with culture there. Yeah. Um, but you're right. One of the nicest things about what they do in their culture is like any time for meals is such a important occasion that the whole family's there together. They eat together. They interact and chat. And me and Linda actually, sorry, beep, 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 I'll do it for yeah. myself. We were talking about this last night and we were saying like how for us, like as a couple, like dinner time is just something that we do, and it's just like f fuck, eat, and then I'm back to work or whatever yeah. like that. Whereas for them, it's like a real occasion to socialize. I don't know how you eat normally eat with your missus, whether you sit down here or whether you go out. You probably don't cook. You're do quite you? good because like Tay, well, you and Tay always cook after training and stuff like that. So like probably without thinking, you've got that cooking time together, haven't you? It's so important yeah. that time to actually like put emphasis in cooking together talking to each other while you're cooking because your hands are fucking distracted so you can't put your phone in it yeah. and then actually enjoying dinner together whereas that's something that me and Lyndall said that we're going to start doing is sitting back at the dinner table and actually having dinner together rather than sitting and watching TV or while we're having dinner. Yeah, I think that's important. Like, I think that it's so good that the boozing isn't so much of a big part. Well, it's not a culture in Islam at all. You realise mm -hmm. they pay more attention to the good stuff. This is one thing and do you know what? I sat, I sat with him and I said, with the shake and I was like, we're fucked up in the West. I was like, now looking at like my almost political and moral compass, I'm more Middle East than I am anything else. Like, <laughs> Shaitan, that's what they called you. Yeah. Yeah, what was your name? I was like, booze is the devil. What, what I was like, they, booze is the devil. What, it what is. nickname did they give No per Shaitan. Yeah. No, no man in history has become a better man with alcohol, ever. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, you guys, you just train jits, hang out, drink tea, watch football. I was like, but, um, it's mad because it's so fun getting pissed and then you're it's right. It's self-destructive as fun. <laughs> like, the, mate, this guy got lit on the plane home. Did you? When? To so the UK. Oh, fuck. White girl wasted. I thought he was joking. He got <laughs> rolling Did off the smashed? plane. Mate, I got absolutely smashed. I had yeah. to wait for him a bit, you know, wait for the business class lot to come out. Um, <laughs> but he, he was fucking white girl wasted. Yeah. And then when mate, he realised... about fucking eight espresso martinis. On eight? That, yeah. How much coffee? How much caffeine's in a... Is it, like, is That's it a nothing shot? for me though, is it? Like, no, what's the equivalent? Just he, come out, he come out of the fucking business class area of the flight with six best mates. <laughs> Introduced them to me, trying to get one, me to set one and up with a publisher. And you love me making new friends as well. Oi, so. <laughs> oi, come here, sniffs. I don't know why you sound yeah. like, would it? Like, <laughs> she's thinking of writing a book. You'll get her a publisher. <laughs> I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. So what is it you're writing a book on? Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'm just meeting my dad. And then I went, he's called Jeff as well. You're like, I've got to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> and then my dad's like, he seems friendly. I was like, yeah. Steaming. <laughs> yeah, steaming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Dubai, anyway, good. Middle East. But it's, um, like, on, I think on your point as well, Sonny, it's quite interesting because like, people ask, oh, like, what's it like living with the missus now? Um, and I think there comes like a preconception of like you spend all your, like I said, you're going to spend all your time together. But I actually think you spend less time. Mate, like, I, my theory, 100%. like my, my weekly routine is I probably get, get up in the morning and I leave for work. You don't see each other then. I'm then at work until probably I get home just after five. I see her for maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. I get my jits bag, I go jits. Yeah. I get home. You've probably got, you're making a bit of dinner. She's probably eating I've eaten. Then you've gone to bed. That's Monday to Friday. That's what I mean. And then you've probably got one day in a week where you'll like, you'll be together. And I think if you're not conscious of that, you realize that you 
physically you're near each other, but you actually don't spend. So I think what we started to do is like just have making sure that at least once a week, and it doesn't have to be military, but you actually spend time where it's either dinner or you're away from stuff. And I think that's also important when you're just living with your mates. Like, yeah. like me, Smith, Cam and Willits lived together for two years. And that's, you can fall into the same trap of going, oh, did you just fart? <laughs> He did, yeah. It just, I felt it fucking shake the yeah. <laughs> But you can fall into the same trap of living with your mates as well, where you're going, when was the last time we all done something yeah. where all of us are present? So I think anyone that's thinking about, my point fucking is, if you're thinking, stinks, fucking yeah. out, if you're thinking about like moving in with anyone or anything like that, you actually don't, the fear of spending so much time isn't actually a, a thing. You actually need to worry about spending enough quality time. Because yeah. you get lazy. You know and I mean? this is the thing, I think you end up just existing with someone rather than really yeah. enjoying their time again. And I don't know the right or wrong answer to it, but I think it's just something to be aware of, isn't it? And when you mm. start living with someone. What were you going to say? It's quite good though, that you could be in a position where you're, you, you've made more of an effort with the boys since you moved out from them. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think- But that's exactly it. That's what we're saying. Like I think, and, and I don't know whether sometimes you rush into living with someone for- Com for a convenience point of view because you're either with them a lot of the time in each other's houses so you go fuck it let's live together and then it's a completely different ball game can you see the chippings of white paint that are there like, we moved the fucking table yeah cam's got some fucking answer answering for this <laughs> um so we're going to move into a fun part of the segment of the podcast today let me get the hot chips oh fucking hell i oh. didn't properly read mate so basically what smith's done is he thought when he was in the corner shop earlier today that it'd be a really brilliant idea to go and get those flaming hot chip challenges where i think it's just one chip enters chat and us to try it now i've heard that these are absolutely horrendously bad have you got milk oh, in the fridge oh, there's, um, there's more than one in the pack okay so we, we should all have one yeah let's all have one let's get a bowl have you got milk okay so i'm gonna read this it says yeah, go on, what does it say? Do not consume on an empty stomach if you are allergic to chili or capsicum. Oh, that's me. Sorry, boys. If you are sensitive to... <laughs> if you're sensitive, yeah. If me. you're... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first can't do this. He's too sensitive. sensitive yeah. If you have a cardiac condition, well, I'm not going to know until I eat this, am I? Um, if you have gastrointestinal problems... Surely it can't be that bad. If you are pregnant or breastfeeding... Can't be worse than heartbreak. <laughs> If you have any other medical conditions. Where did you get this from? Yusuf. Yusuf. <laughs> I don't fucking trust you. So I, I'm going to go down there. I swear to God. What does it say? Hottest chips. It says hottest chips in the world. It can't be that hot. So what are we doing? What's the challenge? Just eat oh. them. Mate, if they were that hot, they they wouldn't wouldn't, there it. wouldn't be like loads of them here, would there? No. <laughs> Leave Pick them on the side for Willits. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hang on. Have you got milk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, I don't think you're meant to drink milk. I know him. And when he starts doing that little fucking giddy laugh. Have you done this before? So, no, I'm swear <laughs> <on>. <laughs> I How are that. we going to do this? <laughs> Just eat it. All right. Go. Well, it's not bad at all. <coughs> what about all... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> hang on a minute. Oh, can I say the C word? Oh, it's a bit spicy, that. It's a bit of a... <laughs> oh, I swear to God, my mouth hurts. <laughs> it's a bit of a creeper. <laughs> <laughs> my mouth hurts. <laughs> oh, I swear to God, my mouth is fucking in pain. I a bit out. Oh. Wow. I need wow. milk. I need oh. milk. I know. Okay. <laughs> no, it's all right. Oh, no moving. Just ride it out, boys. We've got to ride it my out. Nose, my nose hurts. My nose hurts. Oh! <laughs> I need some milk. Oh, no, no. Smith's I'm crying. crying. <coughs> wow. Oh. That's horrible. Oh, my God. My mouth. Oh. Oh, uh. <laughs> oh my, oh, my God. Mouth hurts. Oh. No, seriously, though. Have you got milk? Wow. Oh. That's spicy, that. <coughs> you horrible bastard. Oh, Let's leave him up for bullets. Oh, I'm crying. Oh, it's hot. Oh, oh that <laughs> copper. 
<laughs> Do you know what? The back of my mouth hurts. Oh my god, that's bad. That's bad. That's getting worse. <laughs> I don't think coke helps, to be honest. Oh man, my tongue hurts. Oh. <laughs> I think I rubbed my eye by accident. Hang on. Do you reckon on, this boy. is good to listen to? Or? Uh, <laughs> fucking hell. Do you reckon that was a good idea? Oh, I'm halfway sweating. into the podcast. <laughs> I'm Look, sweating. We can overcome this. So why talk? Uh, why do you think people do this to themselves? Mm. Good content. Oh my god. My thong. Do you want to uh, try and answer some of these questions uh, while yeah. your mouth's burning? Yeah. Yeah, good idea. Let me move these right. Oh my god. Uh, fucking hell. <laughs> Far away. Well, there's just one of the questions. Uh, it's from a guy who's um, planning on coming to Oz. Yeah. In the new year from Ireland. Have you got any advice to him, Smith? Stay out of Bondi. <sighs> Oh, it's okay. Over the hill. What does he want to do? What was the question? He's uh, planned on moving to Oz. Any advice to him? He's moving from Ireland. Well, yeah. Just come out. Yeah, just um, come out. Do what George Knight said. Fuck off, buy a ticket, we'll talk when you're here. <sighs> um, a girl has asked, or a woman, a lady. A female. Do you think, a female, do you think narcissism is more common in the fitness industry and how do you spot one? So Sonny, what she's saying is- Where's that coke, please? How do you spot a smith from a distance? How do you spot... <laughs> <laughs> do you think narcissism... Oh, I can't fucking talk. Coke, in coke, the fitness industry. Yeah, do you think it's more common in the fitness industry? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, for sure. How do you spot one from afar? Any, any telltale signs of a narcissist? Because if you're, you're rewarded for narcissism in the fitness industry. Yeah, correct. That's if, you, if you uh, record yourself all day and um, take pictures of yourself all day, you can run a fitness business. Okay. I've got a, I've got if a you question. did that in fucking IT sales... I've got a question for you both. I've got a question. Uh, but I want you to think before you speak. I can't. <laughs> if you had to commit, if you could commit one crime that would then solve that crime forever. Murder. <laughs> what would you do? Okay, sorry, say again. What? If you I could can commit a crime. You, yeah, you, you can commit a crime that would then solve that crime forever. So no longer can anyone commit that crime. What would it be? And... Think before you put yourself really in it. Why is this a trick question? No, no, no. But like, don't no, say something about, like, about about kids or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't. You, like, although, nah, I don't want to talk about that. But so, <laughs> give me some of that. <laughs> Mate, so that think about it. Was awful. Yeah. Can I have one, please? Okay. So. Yeah. Oh, think of easily murder. Murder. Yeah. You so you'd go outside and you yeah. kill someone. Yeah, I'm not a nice person. Not yeah. a nice person. What would you do? I th think I'd struggle to struggle to murder someone. Yeah, but I've. He'd go speeding. <laughs> and no long speeds. That's what mine is. Um, yeah, but go on. I do watch a lot of murder stuff on TV. Like that's my favourite thing. Mine's watch. mine's perjury, which is where you lie in court, so then no one could ever lie ever again in court. I stole that from Jamie. Can't claim fame for that. I think it's quite good. Yeah, nice. However, I'm in a predicament here because... Went to trial. Because I, 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 I lied in court. You have. I can't really say that. I know someone <laughs> <laughs> who looks like me who lied in court to save his mum. So yeah. I'm in a dilemma. Isn't that called the doctrine of double effect where you pick the best of two evils? Yeah, that's the that's thing. Sweet, so maybe I wouldn't. Mm. Sounds good though, isn't it? But um, have you seen that... Um, I'm going to shut up. That's a weird, it's a weird, it's a great question. And guys, let us know in the comments section on YouTube, mm. what would you do? Yeah, what crime would you commit that would solve all crimes? Tax evasion. Nah, because I'm not totally, <laughs> I'm putting myself in it here. What, so, yeah, it's a fine line, tax evasion. I don't know, I haven't really thought about it, but I don't think, I want to say, I don't think it's too much of a big deal. No, I'd kill someone. <laughs> How would you do it? Um, How'd you go about it? And who would you kill? You'd have to name who he's going to kill. A few people at training pissed me off last week. Go on, tell us. Give me some more sweets. My mouth is fucking still Got my hand licked, didn't I? <laughs> what do you mean? Someone licked my hand in training. What? I thought... I was smothering him. I was suffocating him in my hand. He he's probably listening to this. So if you're listening, don't lick his hand again. <clears throat> is that normal? No. Disgusting. No, you're a little dirty cat. It's like a wet willy. Sonny. Mm. Now, um, but did he say anything about it afterwards? Was he like, I would, ha ha? I'd call up the government. 
you know, probably easier to get through than fucking Amazon customer services. I go, who's a bad boy? Who's a bad person? Let me do it for you. Like a Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm. Oh, wait, do you know what I didn't like about Jeffrey Dahmer? The boners. What do you mean the boners? <laughs> He'd be wanking, wouldn't he, on screen? No, my boners. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You were getting boners watching Jeffrey Dahmer. Mate, I haven't been that disappointed with a semi since the last what, Football World Cup. <laughs> it turned you on. <laughs> I'm so confused. You need you to. You got turned on watching Jeffrey Dahmer. It's a joke. <clears throat> Do you think his dad, it's his dad's fault? No, it's his mum doing all the drugs during pregnancy. You reckon? Mm. And so it what, so what his mum took drugs during being <clears throat> pregnant? She was popping pills. During pregnancy, because it's in one of the scenes, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I've just started feeling Do you know what? Them. Watching that series, I weirdly sympathise with him. Like, they did such a great job of, like, you felt really sorry for him, and then you went, fucking hang on a minute. He just murdered all these people. But I yeah. Felt like they did a I didn't really... It just got a bit slow for me. I, I think yeah, I didn't even finish it. I didn't even shit. watch the last four episodes. If no one's yeah. getting drugged and eaten, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. It was just Because you, you, you feel like it can't be reality. You can't feel like it's actually a real story. So therefore you assume it's fiction and then you go, this is getting a bit slow paced. Yeah, it wasn't for me. <clears throat> you didn't like it? No, not really. I watched it on the plane back back here. And I was just like, oh. And I was feeling a bit rogue like when I was watching it and like people were walking past because there's like obviously a lot of shit going on in it. You know, do you ever do that in the plane? Like was look what other people are watching? Pretty hard in first class. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, but I'll tell you what, I am a full-blown Emirates man now. I used to be Etihad, but Emirates is so much better. Really? It's everything about it. Mate, the pregnancy pillow I took on the last flight, I, it, it was like talking of hiding a dead body, try getting a pregnancy pillow in a carry-on bag. Harder. But I got it out. I slept for nine hours on a 14-hour flight. Nine hours. That's good innings. You take any drugs? No. No, I just melatonin when I landed. Do you know what I watched last night? That's, we should talk about. Hold on. Oh, that, that like was pretty out. savage, but I'm pretty proud of us I'm for just, doing I'm that. I'm concerned about when I go to the toilet. Ring oh, Yeah, it's going to hurt. You know, Ryan Gosling's in uh, Bondi. <clears throat> really? Oh, I heard about this. Um, so is he your male crush? Yeah, he is. More than Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy's not that big. Not that big in what? Is that 84 kilograms? Oh, well, like size wise. How not big Ryan Gosling is? I'll tell you now. But um, he's, he's here. He Do you know he's film? married to Eva Mendes? Yeah. Really? Fair play. They got a kid together. They went trick-or-treating around Bondi. Did they? Fair play. And he wore a mask the whole time. So no one knew. But I watched um, The Place Beyond the Pines last night. Yeah, great film. Mate. Is that the one where he's like part of the circus? Mm. He's whomped up. Have you seen this? No. The place, I was getting a good few mixed film? emotions watching this last night. Good film or not? I haven't finished it yet. Because when he goes to Yeah, but don't worry. Really. Okay. What's it about? He meets a girl at the circus, gets her pregnant. Yeah, I could be this person. Oh, uh, yeah. Bradley Cooper in it as well. He's troubled, yeah. Fair well, play. I thought, that could be me. Maybe I'll just get shredded, start smoking and get some tattoos. <laughs> that could be me. But here's one for you. Do you ever feel a little bit of attraction towards men when they look good? Uh, I seen the thing that you shared yesterday on this. And what I was thought... It? <laughs> <laughs> it's so like, it's so that. funny. It's like... I'm I'm like, like, wait, wait, wait. I'll, I'll play it. Sorry to those of you that are watching this. Maybe we'll see if we can get the edit in post production. But Theo Vaughn is one of my favorite American comedians. But I'll face it to you first. This is brilliant. Sweet Gerard Butler. I mean, I'll say this, you know, I'm a heterosexual adult. You know, and I would say if you chop me open and divide it up uh, and divide me up into 100 pieces, I would say probably. 97 of those pieces would be heterosexual. <laughs> and 3% of those pieces might be getting wild, you know, being <laughs> naughty. You know what I'm saying? Peeking around the roller rink. Seeing who might have a little bit of bulge in, they, in their forefront in their trousers. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I would try anything wild. That just means I might have that double vision. <laughs> that doesn't mean I want to do anything sexual. It just might see, it might be that I see a man's tricep, you know, in a distance. <laughs> And say, dang, oh, he armed up, you <laughs> armed know, up. 
You know what I'm saying? He armed up. And so that's just all it is, you know? He could get out of a pool easy without using the ladder. You know what I'm saying? Because that boy tried up. He, he got them T-seps. Them triceraceps. <laughs> and he out the pool like that without even using the ladder. Just like a damn seal. You know, just like a damn, just like an otter that's trying to get risque and get out of the pool and take his chances sipping on air. You know, and I don't even know if otters just, if they sip on water or not, or breathe water. Some animals breathe water. Breathe, breathe water. But anyhow, uh, but I'm just saying, so that's where I'm at inside of myself, you know. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> but it's an interesting point. And I think you can appreciate a, a bloke, even if you're heterosexual. It comes as almost an emotion of a threat. Because it's a fierce competitor. Thing. No, but yeah. I think it's an appreciation thing. Like if you, especially if you're into your training, right? And you know how hard, how much hard work it takes to get in good shape. And you see someone who's equally in good shape or um, has triceps. Triceps. <laughs> mm. But like, because then if I look at a man who's well put together and he's got like a nice symmetrical face and he's six foot one and all those things, Massive I see pop. him as a competition as well. Because I'm like, I'm going to be competing with this person. For Eva Mendes. Good job I was born after him. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I actually, I'm for it out there. I don't think she's that buff. I thought Ryan Gosling was going to have... You fancied Ryan Gosling more than her. Yeah, that's when you got an issue. And Eva Mendes, if you're watching this, I still think you're a langer. But there are, there are uh, higher caliber langers in my eyes. Fair point. But then don't ask me a fair point. But don't ask me those are because I don't like exercising parts of my brain that don't need to be exercised. Don't need to be exercised. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that point though, Fez, what's your thoughts? Give us one then, please, Fez. On what? On uh, whether you can look, look at blokes and be like, yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. I get, I, tough I, I one with Islam, in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I have appreciation. I can look at... Because um... I don't think it's in that sexual way. Like, what I'm saying is, if there's a guy who's well put together... And he's in good nick. I find you it like, yeah. I also find it like in a weird, like I, I, I like to see it. Like when I, you see a good looking geezer or, or a good, look, anyone that's good looking looks in, in any form of capacity. I'm like, or something I find it You can appreciate that about them. I, I don't like, think you're saying it necessarily yeah. in a, whether you, you think that's gay or not, or whether you'd be gay by seeing, thinking another man's. Penis. Yeah, but I can, shape. I can look at it and go, yeah, he's a good looking geezer. Yeah. Like, uh, can yeah, talk to your mic a bit more, please. Hello. Hello. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's my view on it. Like I have appreciation, I have an appreciation for beauty. Yeah, so, and that's I think that's the way the way to look at it. Doesn't mm. matter if it's a man or a woman. If they're in good nick, you're like, yeah, cool. So uh, I looked the other day. I did a podcast of Andrew Tate. Mm. Yeah, it's got more views than both my Diary of a CEO pods. Where are we allowed to say where? Where is it? Where was so it? So I was invited on a podcast by uh, Tam Khan. Who's a Did you never, never, never heard of him until I started seeing TikToks of him coming up. Um, if you saw the video of Andrew Tate converting to Islam, he was there. And do you know what? I've I didn't been know if that was legit or not. Yeah, I've been following Tam for quite a while on um, TikTok. And um, I just messaged him like uh, after seeing some of his videos. And he messaged back and was like, I've got an idea for a podcast. So did that. And mate, like it's a risque business because you're associating yourself with... Uh, probably the most famous person in the world at the moment, but not really for the right reasons. But I was like... And that's why I was, what I wanted to ask you about it, because I know like you, a controversial person as it is, did that go through your head that by association... Guilty by association. Potentially it would be perceived as though you'd maybe support all of his views, which I'm sure you don't. But that's just fucking ridiculous in itself, isn't it? To but say that's exactly what some people would have thought. And they can feel that way, but just because you sit in a room with someone doesn't mean you, uh, you know, agree with everything they have to say. How can you debate someone if you're not going to go in the same room as them? Mm. How can you disagree with someone if you refuse to give them a voice? So, like, I was, there were definitely some things in that podcast that I kind of disagree on, but I, I can't make a judgment on someone just based on what they've said. I met him, and we spoke for about 20 minutes before he went online. So, I want to ask a few questions, because this is obviously a big, like, people are interested in this. But how did you meet? Like, how did you meet him? Like, what was he like? So Tam said, "Come to the gym." He said, "Don't tell anyone you're coming because there'll be thousands of kids outside, thousands." Kids. The day before, like 
14, 15 year olds. Like the day Who before. Were like, what, following Tate? Tate. <clears throat> okay. So the day before he was uh, doing like a workout, like a boxing thing. And the gym was just full of young, young men. Yeah. So I said, cool. And I met, went, Dylan and I met him. Just had a chat. Just a very polite, nice guy. Smelt very good as well. Very good aftershave. Never smelt it before. Like how he is on camera? Nothing or? like it. Just a really nice guy. Just have a chat. Just talk to him. Just talk to him like a normal human being. Mm. Then when the cameras are on, he switches into character. But so he, he switches into character when the cameras go on. Puts, does he have the shades on when you met him? Um, yeah. I think he's had uh, uh, injuries to his retinas. Mm. So he's got sensitive eyes. I remember him saying that from, uh, that's why he used to kickbox with his gloves down. Because if his glove got knocked into his own eye, it would ruin his sight for the fight. Mm. But like, if, you, if you'd never seen his videos online, you would have thought he was just a very charismatic, intelligent young man. Mm. Then um, when we get in and he starts going into it, you can see he's, he's just pushing buttons. But this is the thing. And I, I don't know whether this is me being um, ignorant to it. But like, when you, like, you, were, you lot were all posting in the, face, in the WhatsApp group that we got, about Andrew Tate, I was like, and then Lockie asked me the other day as well when I was in the gym, he's like, what do you think of Andrew Tate? I don't really give a fuck. And I don't really like have much of an opinion on a lot of things that don't impact me and my life. And I don't know if it's a bad thing to not acknowledge other opinions and things, but I really day to day stick to what I'm focusing I, on. I've, I've always things. said that in general though, like you're two very different, like you throw yourself in the boxer ring, get in the mix, you'll pick up topics here, there. Whereas like you're very Switzerland. But I don't, like, yeah, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I just don't take much it's, interest it's more, in... It's definitely more dangerous what you do. But like the interesting thing for me is <clears throat> a lot of accusations got thrown around uh, about him, which we just don't know are true. Mm. And like what kind what, of... What, what uh, sex trafficking, uh, assault, like loads of different allegations. And for me, I was like, okay, cool. But I won't use hearsay to defame someone or to like take it personally. So then I was like, okay... If he had criminal charges against him, mm. I would not associate with him. And you've got to give people the benefit of the doubt. Like, let's say someone said to, that Ferris was a racist or he said, like, you know, discriminate, whatever it is. Mm, yeah. If someone calls you a sex offender, you can't take that as truth unless there's evidence behind it. So I did look online to see whether or not there were any allegations. And there are loads of allegations, but there's no evidence. There's no conviction. So I was yeah. like, surely the world we live in, you're innocent to prove guilty, not guilty to prove yeah. innocent. So then I was like a bit disappointed that how quick the media turned. There's like a hundred different media pieces on him being a sex trafficker where there's actually nothing to prove it. Mm. And again, I could be wrong. I'm just saying I went online to try yeah, and find yeah. it and I couldn't find a single thread of it. And then the second thing was the censorship thing where it just doesn't sit with me well that he had everything deleted in a day, even yeah. his Airbnb account, his Uber account. Ultimately, <laughs> like it's great that you were given the opportunity to to meet him, to be able to form your own opinion. Because people will respect, at the end of the day, your opinion of a person. And if you've had, regardless of, like you said, for a lot of people, don't like him, don't like the stuff that he puts out, for you to actually get to meet that person in the flesh and form your own opinion is also quite cool in itself. So The, the big thing is, it actually hasn't got that much to do with Andrew Tate. It's got to do with this incredible weird thing I've noticed in the last few years. During uh, covid People turned psychopathic for no reason. Wear your mask. And you're like, I don't want to wear my mask. You mm. must. You've got to protect other people. You're killing people if you don't wear the mask. And I'm like, what? where were you people before this time? Right? What were you doing? Because people just became absurd in the pandemic. People that were like, don't stand up at the table because you'll give people COVID. Yeah. And you're like, why has everyone just been brainwashed to do this thing? So in the last six months, there have been a few times that I would bring him up just to rile up other people. I was yeah. on an easy jet flight to Lisbon and there's a girl there going, I hate him. And I leant forward and I go, what is it exactly you don't like about him? She goes, oh, he's this, he's this, he's this. I was like, okay, I'm not disagreeing with you. Can you just tell me one example of one of the things you've just referenced? And she couldn't give one. I was like, there's almost this crazy thing going on that people by default were just agreeing to the status quo with no evidence behind it. And they were so emotionally invested. I've never seen people so emotionally invested in a topic since COVID. Mm. And it just fascinates me on that. How can someone, because I've obviously polarized people quite a lot. This is what, the reason that I'm, I even wanted to meet him, whatever. He's a genius in the sense that he polarized the world. And we're digital marketers, right? 
Yeah. We, all, we were in an attention economy where all of our time on social media, even now with a podcast, is trying to obtain people's attention to listen to us and not other people. Yeah. He has done that better than anyone else. For me, it's like going and touching the, the freak, the marketing expert, and trying to figure out how exactly has this person got the, the world at his fingertips. Yeah. The, the thing is, though, and I'm, and I'm just I'm bringing this up for debate, what's dangerous about this is that social media now, it's unvetted. There's no, um, there's no regulations. There's no, no, and I didn't, when I- I know there's it, so many naked birds coming up on my <laughs> discovery no, page. I'm going the other way. <laughs> everything, everything. Um, uh, there was a post, a boxing post the other day that had the word jab in it and it came up with a COVID warning. But it's like, that your reach as a, as, a, as a digital marketer or anything like that, your reach, like you, you, you now can't ignore social media, right? You can reach everywhere. And my, um, when I first saw his stuff, and I think we, you got to think we're adults, we, we, our brains are fully um, registered. As soon as I saw it, I was like, this, this guy isn't like this. He's obviously got some sort of marketing, something that he's doing. Lo and behold, he's got Hustlers University, right? So more yeah. engagement, more eyes, dr- drives to whatever academy it's what most people you know you put out some controversial topics do they sell my products cool yeah but the he is so controversial what the thing that really stuck out for me once is i was in the gym at jits and i was in the changing room and there was i think there were 11 or 12 and he's and fucking i can't remember last time i saw like the someone that young but they were getting they looked really young anyway and they were talking about him and they were like oh yeah i don't know why he got cancelled i don't know why and they were talking about um, you know, he said this about girls and that, and I was like, the problem is that they, I can look at his videos and go, okay, well, obviously that's not true, or th- th- he's doing this for that, but you, the danger is, is you're playing with a, an audience is my, at, at that age, and young boys who are formulating ideas about maybe relationships or women or whatever, and it's like, whose, whose fault is that? Is it the social media platforms that, like, you know, you need an age restriction. To, they, like, you know, should they be regulated? Because his content yeah. maybe should be 16 or 18 plus because anyone that views this stuff can easily go okay i'm going to take that bit or this bit but yeah someone who's 11 can't and that's a fair point uh, it's 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 just it's just it's just dangerous uh, a world that we live in where a a little snippet can can be because he always says you know have you seen the whole clip and stuff but it takes one little clip and then someone can go rogue Um, i think that's the way social media has gone but like so many people have fucked up before. Logan Paul took a video of a dead body in Japan. Mm. Someone who'd hung himself. And that's when he got cancelled. Yeah. And for him, it was a learning curve. It was, okay, cool, I'm going to rebrand, whatever. If that had happened today, can you imagine TikTok of him doing that thing? Yeah. A lot of it is timing as well. A I, lot of people have done some fucked up shit. I think it's like you said just then, Smith, about people. there's so many people out there in the world that, like you said, were... No, <laughs> that we're never interested in Andrew Tate or that topic before, but now all of a sudden are just like they were about. It's like the, the Kardashians. But it's the people that didn't have anything to believe in before. It gives them, I guess, a feeling that they've got something to believe in now. But there are still, and again, this isn't me defending him. This is, there are some things in my mind that I hadn't thought about. And some of the videos, and this is, I'll openly say, some of the videos of his I completely disagree with. But there was one where he goes, I, I have 31 supercars. He goes, one of them would cost this amount of money. On the average salary, you'd have to save your money for 90 years before you can afford one. He goes, I've got 30 of them. Now tell me how the system isn't broken. How have I got 30 when you'd have to wait 90 years to buy one? And he's getting people to kind of unlock their minds to the fact that a lot of people are just sleepwalking through their life. Yeah. And like... I, but I think like also sometimes like for me, I even think like, well, I would like to be more outspoken, but like you were saying, Fez, I don't because I don't know if it would always have a, a positive in- impact. And that's something that worries me. But I see stuff that I probably should say more about because I want to shred some people that are chat absolute shit about what they do in my industry. But I'm like, is that positive? Or is this going to have a positive effect? And that's why I always ask myself when I think about what I want to say, but you, it it wouldn't necessarily engage as what's much your, as it would. What's your take on that? Because I feel like you pulled the trigger very quick on like, you like getting stuck in. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you could call me one of the, 
most negative people in the fitness industry, but I got the biggest crowds at the talk. You could call him one of the most negative people on social media, but he's the one with 3,000 kids watching him work out. Mm. Yeah. So there's obviously, even though it's portrayed as negative, some people are taking some positives out of it. And I don't think for a second, many people are listening to his message and going home and beating their wives because of it. No. I think there's a lot of men that are kind of, or young men that are finally being spoken to for once. Because remove him out of the situation, what have you got on TikTok? Girls dancing to, do you know, the fucking Tiger King soundtrack. Then before that, you got mukbang of people chewing food. Like the, on social media, it's just been drivel and brain dead. It's just been there kind of monging people into being fucking nothing. And you, then you have a strong voice who comes on and goes, stop being fucking lazy. Get off your ass and make something of your life. And ultimately, they just want... Um, Someone, I, I, John, I don't think he's like, well, I've said this on podcasts all the time, but there are, there is a, obviously a gap in the market for a leading male voice to be there for young men. If not him, then who are these young people supposed to listen to? Yeah, I think he, like you said, got the attention because he is so outspoken. Could it be delivered in a better way? Potentially. And I think that that's, it's interesting to hear your take on that because like I said, it's, it definitely makes me open my eyes up a little bit more to how I should probably speak up or speak out a little bit more about potential topics or things that I do have an opinion on in order to positively help people that almost don't know what's right and what's wrong at that time. The majority of men, probably in the UK, are overweight. The majority of men are passionless. The majority of men are loveless. The majority of men are broke. Mm. Who's going to speak to them? Yeah. Well, I think at the end of the day, it's like you said, people will either be there to absorb it or they they won't, you know? Like it's, you, you're you looking at stuff from choice. <laughs> I was just luring in Switzerland. I was just <laughs> yeah. luring in Switzerland. I was waiting for the Alps. I was yeah. waiting for the Alps. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but there's, there is definitely a, there's definitely a crisis going on because, like I say, like... Um, have you seen some of the guests that have been on Stephen's Diary CEO podcast recently? Uh, like who? Um, <clears throat> fuck, I can't remember his name. But they're just talking about the issues that men are going to start facing with dating, with relationships, with awkward conversations, with the dating apps came but along. But your VR ain't going to help. Mm. Mate, the... Um, <laughs> <laughs> VR You'll be like that. <laughs> dating apps help the top 15% of men get the other 100% of women. So, like, if you're a short guy with bad chat or whatever... Mm you still had your opportunity in Starbucks. You still had your opportunity on night out when you made a girl laugh at the bar. Yeah. When everything became about dating apps, it became about a profile picture, status, yeah. uh, your chat. And a lot of people suffered when it came to the dating realm. Look at you, Fez. Yeah, but- Dating apps weren't kind to you, were they? No, nah, they weren't. But I feel like- Cost you a lot I, of money. But, <laughs> yeah, they did. But I feel like people that say, oh, I'm going to get rid of them and not use them. Again, I feel it, I feel you-, you we're in a world now where you have to use them. And I feel yeah. the way I see dating apps is... the time that, thing as well. Yeah, it's like a fishing rod. when you've got a missus first. <laughs> well, you got, it's like a fishing rod. And I think you just have to have it out there and don't control it. Ha people that go, oh, I'm deleting social media. I'm not having it. No, just have it. Just control yeah. it. And it's the same with dating. Like, I, like I, I met, you know, my girlfriend now, George, on it. And if I didn't have it... Um, I think you, you can't ignore it. It's basically what I'm saying. It's convenient, yeah. I think, for people to meet that way. Is it the only way you can meet someone? No, but I think one of the things that affects like, a bit like what Smith was saying, a lot of men and women maybe meeting people face-to-face -face or having that opportunity when they cross someone in the street that they think's fit and not yeah. saying anything about it, it com must come down a little bit to confidence to be able to interact. And I think the longer and longer uh, or the further through life we're going to go, the le even more likely it is that people are going to struggle with those interactions, like what you were saying, um, and having... Yeah, there's, it's a different... Sure there's, even, there's even like a new fitness one that was a, f uh, a fitness dating app where it's just for people that are into fitness. So, you, you know, same how you've got Muzmatch for Muslims. Wasn't it called Minda? <laughs> got Muzmatch, Minda. Uh, fair enough, because you being Muslim in the eastern suburbs wasn't the easiest, was it? No, nah, um, but f I've said this before. Religion for me is like one of the, le you know, great if you, you know, if they're religious bonus points, but I'd much rather, uh, it, it's much more important to me how I get on with someone and being around someone having fun than, you know, you doing Ramadan with me, like fucking starve as much as you want. Like I'm, I'm cool doing that by myself. But More so like- um, It might be an attractive trait yeah. for, for someone though. Because yeah. you're a religion, you don't drink. 
yeah. 99% of the people in the eastern suburbs drink on a first date. Yeah, it was a, I mean. do you know what it was, and it was a big thing when, uh, like dating and even like meeting George, for instance, it was like, oh yeah, I, I don't drink. What, what do you do for a people without them knowing your background? They're like, oh, he must be re- George. Thought I was a recovering alcoholic. Yeah, good. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I yeah. I did my event in um, Dubai, and the next day I see a guy yeah. walking on the palm. He goes, I'm on a date, and um, we've gone for a walk instead of going for a drink because of what you said in your talk. Yeah, you come into my talk. Have I got your tickets up house? I hope I you, yeah. it matters. We can see tickets. the venue from here. We're gonna need tickets. Yeah, I'll sort you out tickets. You I sent you the, you the video guys. Huh? I mean, Sydney Opera House, one of the most iconic venues in the world, one of the most expensive. I once applied for a job in the bar there, but Good job. you didn't get it. No, because I didn't have my RSA. Really? Yeah, my registered whatever it's called. Mate, looking forward to it. Don't get me wrong. Two weeks time. Do um, you think it's gonna be better than London or not? You're like you're at London, mate. That was fucking mad, wasn't it? Some say I flew back from Bali for it. Mate, that was first three and a half thousand people. It was insane. Yeah, it was. It, it was actually mad to think that he could fucking sell that many tickets. Mashallah. So it'll be good. It'll <laughs> How be good many people will come into Sydney? Uh, probably 1,500, 2,000. But it would be sick. And I What's it like inside? I've never been in it. I've never been inside. Nah. I've always wanted to go inside. You didn't go in and have a look before you thought. Nah, and it's the most expensive venue in the world. Really? Uh, yeah, it's fucking... We're pretty much, if we sell like 1,500 tickets, we'll break even. Um, but, but it's, it's either just that. a flex. It was that or the Enmore. I was like, I'm not yeah. doing the Enmore. You done Is the uh, Enmore. Deering coming out? Uh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> now, Deering will be out soon. We'll get him on the pod. When's he coming out? Uh, like the day before. Yeah, nice. Oh, I thought he was coming with you from Dubai. He hates Sydney. What's he wrong with him? him? Mate, he, um, and then he's going to, he's man. leaving, he's leaving Australia the first day he can because he's got a grading in London, once he gets purple belt. Who's been winning when you've been wrestling lately? Don't ask. Him. Yeah. Out of respect, we won't say anything. Yeah, yeah, let's say that. The <laughs> only person who's beat me up recently was the Sheikh in Dubai. <laughs> he fucking I thought you might have let him win, else he might have just turned around and gone. He made someone squeal in the gym the other day. What happened? Did some guy kicked your shins out. Yeah, he just, you, when you roll, you gotta roll nice. Mm. And he wasn't rolling that nice. And he, he, with his foot, he pushed my knee to hyper my leg. So I was like, that's it. And I took his fucking foot off. <laughs> what do you mean? His, his gate basically put on a foot lock and I was rolling on the other side and all I heard was, ah! And he was like, come on, get up. <laughs> get up. <laughs> do, 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 you, do you go, whoops? Nah, I told him. I said, don't. You, you're messing with fire, you get burnt. You're bigger than that. Get up. Now, he was, he, was, he was rolling stupidly. And if it was me and I was doing that, I would expect someone to do that to me. You know, sometimes you can he's love... A, he's a blue belt as well, which is annoying. It's you like, can love a dog, but when you catch it doing something you shouldn't, you give that backside a little slap. <laughs> and it's a, it's a slap out of love. Mm. And it's not because you want to hurt the dog. I say that to George all the time. Fucking misogynist. <laughs> but yeah, no. Nah, um, it'd be good, mate. It'd be good to get him out here. Uh, get in the mix. Uh, you know, but yeah. It would have been cooler if he could stay a bit longer. But he hates Sydney. He's going to Perth. The first opportunity he has as well. Um, because he's got some mates out there. Too many flies. Oh, we'll get him on. Earth. We'll get him on a fair points. Yeah, we'll get him on. And it's um, it's been good. It's been good to get back into this. We're gonna try yeah. and get one out a week. We're gonna try. Like and I was trying to think what season this is because we could we could season, call this season like a three. season. This is season three. Mm. This is mm. fair points season three. Oh episode fuck yeah! Because we did um, the old. First of all, we were on the road. Yeah. Then we did the old house. Yeah. And then this is the new house. Yeah. yeah. And this enough. setup's pretty good. Um, three cameras now. Yeah. We'll try and. Um, Go YouTube. We'll promote YouTube the most. Yeah, yeah. We want uh, to start engaging with with the listeners and start doing some. Might some, even get a little sponsor. Some weekly prizes for for people listening that will start coming up. Yeah, we're gonna just start hammering this a little bit harder, especially now. Like, I'm not going away for. I'm not going away the rest of the year, or at least till hopefully March. Smith isn't either. Ferris is. Hey, Ferris is here. I'm here. <laughs> Wait, I'm so, so devastated that I'm not going to have a PlayStation 5 to play tonight. <laughs> Mate, you'll be fine. But we're going to do this on a weekly yeah. episode ting. And we're even going to try and actually put some in the fucking... In the locker so that we don't miss dropping an episode for you. I'm actually just looking straight down the barrel of the fucking middle camera. And <laughs> the ZV-10. And it's, yeah, it's actually, uh, it's actually just died. Shut up. <laughs> Which one? The, the middle <laughs> one. Yeah, I was going to leave that one plugged in. The one I'm looking at. Well, you can finish off to the one on the left because they're plugged in. 
Guys, um, it's the... Do you, want, do you want to come over this way a bit? Yeah, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just come in here. So basically, guys, at this point of the uh, episode is time for Space Facts now. So for anyone that's new here... Yeah, come sit next to me. So. Just be careful, that table is going to fall apart. Anyone, <laughs> anyone that's new here, um, we like to share a little bit of knowledge because we chat fucking mainly dribble for the majority of the hour. And then at the end, James likes to show off his... Uh, knowledge in the space world and I attempt to make one up and Ferris never comes to one prepared. <laughs> should, we, should we start with Ferris? <laughs> Do you know what? You're not actually going to believe it but genuinely last week at work <laughs> was probably one of my busiest weeks. It was a good week at work. It went really well. So I didn't have too much time on the space facts but next week I'll come with space facts. This week I came with a question so busy week a at work. A question? Yeah. But um, what's the question? Uh, I'm going to say uh, the Arabic word is smehli, which means uh, forgive me. Smehli. Smehli. No, but smehli. Smehli. Yeah. <laughs> that smehli. sounds. We went Italian. Italian. <laughs> yeah, smehli. <laughs> Sunny, what's your space fact? Um, I think we'll give it to Smiths. Yes. And that, let me find one quickly. Just an easy one. The uh, the Milky Way is on a collision course with the nearest uh, galaxy, which is the Andromeda galaxy. So soon they will collide. Ooh. Will that affect our life? Who knows? It's about five billion years away, but... Five billion years? I think we would have blown up by them. Do you think? That could be your space fact. How exactly <laughs> are we going to blow up? <laughs> what, the Earth? Yeah. I'm fucking well, eat, eating, one of those, eating one more of those fucking chips. <laughs> <laughs> basically, this is how we're going to blow up. We're going to yeah. give everyone one of these. and Mate, just John, I'm actually buzzing about the idea of leaving what them are they? out. Hot for Willis. Willis. So from Willis World's hottest in, ships. Just eat yeah. um, how are we going to blow up? Well, the planet might get really, really hot and <laughs> it will get so hot that it will start boiling like water in a pan and then go... <laughs> not, and on that note... <laughs> uh, it's been good to have you cunts back. Yeah, it's and, good to um, see, you, uh, see you boys. Guys, thanks so much. Episode one complete. Uh, don't forget to go and like, share, subscribe, YouTube. This is where this is going to be dropping. In addition, do not forget to go and check out Big Friday Supplies. That's my shameless plug. Put it Get in the description. Put it yeah. in the description. You send right me any here. links you want, I'll put them in the description. All right, sick. Any links you want, I'll put them in the description. Cheers. And um, guys, if everyone there could just send one prayer for me and that the PS5 will show up before 8pm. <laughs> guys, topics as well for yeah. Cheers, week. everyone. Bye. Bye.